be ready to see Jesus. <laughs> when did Christians, when did Christians start fearing death? I thought we're supposed to. Isn't death, hell, and the grave subject to the power of the Holy Ghost? To the power of God? Didn't Jesus defeat death, hell, and the grave? That means he's in control of it. Why am I afraid of death when the Bible tells me to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? Ain't that the goal, Delvin? Isn't that the goal? Ain't that where we're trying to go? And ducking when folks talk and, oh, bro, can't you shake your hand? Can't you shake your hand? What you scared of? Won't you repent? You won't be afraid of dying. Get your life right. Because when I leave here, I'm seeing Jesus. Things are going to get better for me. So I'm not worried about it. Believers afraid of dying. And not even afraid of dying because there's no proof of the death. You just afraid they said you might die. Attributing the stuff, the stuff to COVID. Somebody done ate ham sandwiches four times every day. You gonna call that COVID. Boy, that ain't COVID. That's ham. Honey baked disease. You got the honey. I ain't never ran. You've never run in your life. On my COVID, oh my breathing. I ain't took a vitamin ever. Flintstone, that's the last vitamin you took. Oh, gummy bear vitamin. Talk my COVID. Oh, I got COVID. Fruity pebbles every morning. You grown. Why you grown eating sugar cereal? Sugar bits. Just float. Alpha bits. And all your box got to have a cartoon on the front. Frankenberry. And then COVID. Oh, COVID. 50 grams of sugar. Every bowl. But it's COVID. You using the catering spoon to eat your cereal. <laughs> That's a serving spoon. <laughs> oh, it's COVID. Y'all pray. Y'all pray to church. Then they always report it back to the church. Make the folks most scared to not go to church. Why are you scared to go to church? Why are you scared to save folks? Why are you scared of family members? This don't make no sense. Amen. And see, I preach it now because they, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of y'all taking shots at me because we dare to come together in fellowship like the Bible tells us to. In the end times, I ain't going out in the bed watching, the vid watching a video. I want to be with the saints. Amen. I want what I've been talking about all these years to come to fruition. I ain't been talking about faith for 20 years and now I don't have none. And I mean shouting and making noise. These are the loudest folk. All these folk were so loud. Bucking like donkeys. Oh, yes. No. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. You going to church Sunday? Oh, no, no. You're going to catch something. You wasn't saying that when you tore half the church up, split the pew in half. All that noise you was making and now none of it. What? All right. The holidays bring fear for many. So many today are living in fear of what their future 
whole. So if your life is not where you want it to be, if your life is not where, you know, you, you, uh, you thought it should be, all of these things, a lot of times when the holidays start approaching, you start getting that feeling. Amen. Especially if you, uh, you know, at odds with your family, if you, you know, at odds with your, in your relationship, your relationship has failed, or you're by yourself, you, you're single, whatever, a lot of times you start getting that feeling when the holidays come because you start looking at, you know, things, and it'll bring depression sometimes and anxiety because you're not where you feel you should be. Amen? So many today are living in fear of what their future holds. Luke 21 and 26 tells us that in this time, these end times, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking for those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So during this time, this time is the time where people begin to fear and the Bible says that their health or their hearts will begin to fail them because of this fear. So people are afraid of what's going to happen. They're afraid, you know, and they done made everybody, you know, scared to get together. Families are, family members are rejecting their own family members. So it's even worse than ever before. That's why our suicide rate is so high. They're trying to isolate everyone, keep everyone away from everyone. So you will depend totally on what you read and see on the internet with no one to guide you through it and get a head full of foolishness. And I mean, it's, it's just bad. Look at somebody say strong delusion. I mean, it, it, it's real too. So the holidays brings this for many people. This is just the time I get more emails and more messages and different things people pray for me because of depression and because of anxiety and suicidal thoughts and all of these things during the holiday season because people's lives just aren't where they want them their trust in God is no longer there because they have humanized Christ in their minds and truly do not believe he can do what he promised this is why I'm t teaching y'all against all this yoga and transcendental meditation. All these different things that bring power to your human spirit from other sources. Those things, when you do that, it, it humanizes Christ and the power of God. And once you humanize it, then you start trying to figure out how it works. Then you start trying to figure out what it will work on. Then you lose faith in it working on certain things. You'll literally walk around believing that the power of God is not going to do certain things that he promised. Yeah, you'll begin to lose faith in it. This is why, this is the main goal of the New Age movement, is to make you lose faith. Y'all, 2021, write it down. This is going to be the year where your faith is going to be tested. Whether or not it's really real. All that you have believed, it'll be tested this coming year, whether or not it's real. So you better have the Holy Ghost living in you so something can register and bring back to remembrance what the power of God has done for you. Amen? But folks, trust is no longer in God. They've humanized Christ. They've made him like a man. They, you know, because... A lot of times when you grow up and you're traumatized or you grew up on the rough side of the mountain, whatever, you grew up without a father, whatever the case, at odds with your father, whatever, when men let you down all your life, I tell y'all all the time, then you'll begin to look to Christ or look to the word the same way when it doesn't work for you. You know, there are certain things that God is just not going to do for you until it's time for it to be done. But when you're expecting it, and, you know, you, you, you've been at odds with the men in your life. You've had issue with them. And then you expect something from God and you don't get it. You'll humanize him and put him in that same category of disappointment. So they humanize Christ in their minds and they truly do not believe he can do what he's promised. Second Thessalonians 2 and 11 says, and for this cause, God shall send them what? Strong delusion that they should what? believe a lie. Why would God send them strong delusion? Well, because God is coming back for those that are his. Not those that are deluded by delusion. They talk about him in church. Had an emotional experience when they were younger. And hoped that he would make things better for them. Yet their own decisions, reactions, lack of life planning. Ooh. 
Lack of life. You know you can't just live. You can't just wake up every day, go to sleep, and just live. Look at somebody say, there's got to be a plan. Oh, I could stay right there. Especially if you're a man. A man can't just sleep and wake up and play video games. And, bro, you need a plan. Because time is going to pass. And the older you get, the more you're going to wish you had had a plan. But the older you get, it starts getting too late for a plan. In my 20s, I had a plan. I had a plan. I prayed. I asked God for it. God gave it to me. I kept it. I didn't let nobody talk me out of it. I didn't let nobody change my course. I stuck with the plan. And to this day, I'm still with that same plan. Look at somebody and say, you better have a plan. Oh, lack of life planning. So their own decisions, reactions, and lack of life planning has yielded them what? Bad results. Which in turn damaged their view of the Savior. See, because somebody told them that God was going to get them out of what they kept getting themselves into. I know I'm preaching. Hey amen. I don't need the organ and we don't, hey amen, we don't need that fire. The truth will do it. Hey amen. Yeah, but somebody told them. They were taught that Jesus was going to come and rescue them. Without them changing their behavior or their decision making. Amen. Jesus saved your soul. Amen. But if you're stealing, you're still going to jail. Amen. You breaking in folks' houses? The power of God don't cover that. Amen. You lying? You lying on folks? The power of God don't cover that. The lack of life planning yielded them bad results and it damaged their view of the Savior. In 20 and 21, you better have a good view of who Christ is because you're going to need him to do everything that he said he would do. Loneliness, guilt, or being disappointed in your life can make the holiday season hard to endure. Amen? So, you know, folks... Woo! Bad relationships, bad decisions, even pain others have caused can take your focus away from Christ and make you focus on how bad things appear. You ever done that? Like just start thinking about bad stuff, and by the time you finish, you're ready to jump off a bridge? Amen. Well, it's even more so prevalent now that they've opened up these portals and brought these spirits here. Now you got stuff whispering in your ear, telling you to end it all, telling you it's not worth it. You sitting up there with children, a family, husband, or you sitting up there with people that love you, your mother, your father, whoever. And these beings are speaking in your ears, telling you that life is not worth it. God has brought you through so many things. He's healed your body. He's brought you out of situations you thought you could never get out of. And a demon will whisper in your ear, tell you to take your own life. You shouldn't be here. It's not worth it. That's the time we're living in. But the Bible tells us what we need to be thinking about. Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, do what? These are the things you think on. It is in our nature to desire good and to want what's good for ourselves. Did you know that? It's in your nature to want good. It's in your nature to want good and what's good for you. When God made us, 
He said it was good. So there is a need and a desire in all of us to have good in our lives. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of what? Thoughts of what? Peace and not of what? Look at somebody say, God's not trying to kill you. Some of us grew up so Pentecostal, man, we was ducking in prayer. <laughs> Scared to go in the prayer closet. Go on and go in the prayer closet, talk a little. Oh, you know. Yeah, just scared. Because we thought God had evil thoughts toward us. The, the reason you're alive right now is because he loves you. The reason you are in here right now is because he looked beyond your thoughts, uh, beyond your faults, and he saw your needs. That's why you in here now. Because he loves you. Amen. So thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a what? A what? His expected and what he wants for you. That's what he's thinking about you. He's thinking about how to make your life better. Just wanting you to yield. Can you yield? Man, if you would just yield. Give up the selfish ambition. Give up the dream and the vision. Somebody laid hands on you and told you you was going to be a millionaire. You've been chasing that for 10 years. You still are broken there. Yeah, I don't need nobody laying hands on me telling me I'm, I'm bro, if you ain't laying the million on me, you can keep that word. Because yeah, you ain't finna make me chase that. You ain't putting ambition in me. I'm not letting you interrupt and ruin my life like that, have me chasing stuff, trying to make what you said come true. And where's your million? Why, why, why is God funneling it through you and ain't none of it getting in your pocket? Ain't nobody broke laying hands on me either. I don't need the spirit of broke either. Well, they'll tell you anything. Oh, brother. Man, these folks going to have to give an account for this stuff they done told folks. Because some of these folks have chased it all their lives. Some of them ended their life because they couldn't get it. I know people that have killed themselves. Suicide. Because the word that was spoken over them didn't come to pass. Hey Amen. Don't come asking me. I don't know. I don't know what your finances are going to look like. You come, oh, what is God telling you about my finances? Well, give me your books. I can tell you. I don't need the power of God. Give me the books. Let me see how you manage money. Bro, how, well, let me, give me your savings account. Tell them about a trick. Come on, give me the ledger. Where's the ledger? Where are your receipts? Huh, brother, we don't need all that. I just need God. To... No, nah, bro. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> See your credit card statement. How you spending? Then I prophesy on you. I prophesy with facts. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Talk to the Lord. Get down on your knees one day and just say, Lord, I need to work on my credit. I want my name better. So, Lord, let's just get on a path of making my name better. Because 10 years is going to pass. And your name still going to be mud. Come up in the computers and folks, ooh, whoo. <laughs> you go try to buy something and they pull you up. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need the effects, bro. I know it's bad. <laughs> yeah, and that's cute. That's funny in your 20s. But it's time you need to get that together. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. But you can't live every day like that just waking up and going to sleep. You need to start working. Look at somebody say, work on stuff. See, because all they're going to do, J. Brian, is sit in here, and then five, six, seven years later, when they don't get what they wanted, they're going to get mad at me. Like something is wrong with what I'm preaching. And he got all the money. He don't want his members to have no money. Why would I not want y'all to have money? That's more money for the church. I hope all y'all get paid. I hope y'all get raises and, and bonuses and 
I hope, you, man, the sky is the limit. Boy, I hope, oh, I hope you can fly, land a helicopter in the parking lot. Take me for a ride in it. All right. Hope y'all get boats and water vessels. All right, man. Why? Oh, he don't want, why? I want you to be blessed. However, we do not work hard at mending relationships. Listen to this. We do not work hard at mending. How many of you know mending relationships is hard work? Have you ever, the Lord ever told you to pick up a phone? You know, you're getting closer to the Lord. You want to just know him. I want you, God, I just want to know you. Lord, I want to get closer. And God said, okay, you want to get closer? Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, here I come, Lord. You know, you the little, the little toddler. You just, come on, come on, come on. Where are you taking me, Lord? Where we going? Where we going? Where we going? And then he show you somebody's face that you hate with all of your guts. I mean, your guts, your wife, kids' guts, the guts that you ate for Thanksgiving, all guts. That's how much you hate this person. Uh, with every gut you can think of. Every inch of the intestines. I hate this person. And God will show you that person. Say, call him. What, Lord? No. Call him. You stop walking like a toddler. You... No, Lord. Uh-oh. <laughs> you get that old bob with it. No. <laughs> oh, no. It's the devil. Oh, Satan. I rebuke you. The Satan. And God is just like, nope. Call that person. Call that person. But I didn't do nothing to them, Lord. They think you did. So just call them and clear the air. And then the next thing they do to you, I'm going to deal with them. But if I, I, I need you cleared. See, a lot of times God is clearing you so he can get them. He don't want you a part of what he's going to do to them. Because God's going to always get them. He said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I will what? I will repay. He said he's going to repay. He don't want you in the vicinity. He don't want your name in it. He don't want you involved in it. So he wants you to clear yourself. Pick up the phone and get out of it. That's what you're doing. If I've done anything to you, bro, man, I'm sorry, man. Just forgive me. Knowing you ain't done nothing, but man, just anything. You hang that phone up, you're clear. God just pulled you away so you don't get none of that smoke he about to, because he about to do his thing. And when God pays people back, they know they're getting paid back for what they did to you. So you don't even have to worry about that part either. Just like their face came to you. <laughs> yeah, just like their face came to you. Your face is going to come to them in their calamity. But it's hard to mend relationships sometimes. And God don't always want you to mend it so you can, so y'all can be together. God just wants you to fix it and clear the air so you don't have unforgiveness in your heart. Let people off the hook so you can be forgiven. Can I keep preaching in here? If we do not work hard, oh, look at somebody say it's hard work. Work hard at mending relationships, forgiving others. Ooh, and this is the one. Accepting responsibilities for the mistakes we have made. Sometimes you got to call it. That was my bad. And you got to know when it's your fault and quit blaming folks. If you a little fast heifer, you can't blame nobody for that. That's you out there acting like a flues. That's you. You're the one doing that. You put that on. You shot them pictures on Instagram. You're the one put yourself out there. That's you. <laughs> My daddy issues. That ain't got nothing to do with your daddy. You put the pictures up. Your daddy didn't upload them pictures. You need to accept responsibility. Amen. You done quit every job you've ever had. And you might oh, see, the times are just hard. Yeah, they're hard for you because you won't work. Bro, you won't treat people right. You won't talk to your boss right. You got to, I quit or I'm, a, I'm subject to quit mentality everywhere you go. You can't blame nobody for that. So sometimes we have to take responsibility for the mistakes we have made. Amen. That's why your prayers come out your mouth and hit the floor. God don't want to hear what you got to say. 
because you won't take responsibility for your mistakes. Can I keep preaching in here? Then we will not benefit from the Savior coming to bring peace on earth. If he brought peace on earth, you know why you don't have peace? Because you don't carry peace. So Jesus can bring peace on earth and it can be on earth. It's just not in your life. Romans 14 and 19, let us therefore follow after the things which make for what? Oh, goodness. Let us follow after the things that make for what? Peace. Peace. Why are you following things? Even following people that don't make for peace. And then wonder why there's no peace in your life. But we need to follow after the things that make for peace and things wherewith one may what? Is it going to help somebody and build somebody up and edify someone? But let us follow after the things that make for peace and things wherewith one may what? Edify one another. Somebody, what does this have to do with Christmas? Listen to the message and receive it. We cannot expect good. To come to us if we do not have good will. I could leave it right there. Could just I could. We cannot expect good to come to us if we do not have good will. You wishing something bad on somebody. No good is going to come to you. You are no good human. No good. If you're sitting up wishing bad stuff, no good is coming to you. What precedent would it set if Christ was to bless your life and you cursing lives? Yeah. So you can't expect good to come if we do not have goodwill toward others. The very hatred, unforgiveness, wrath, and vengeance we carry against others will always block us from having peace and good. In our lives. Now God created you to have good. Because he said you were good. When he made you he said it is good. So that means that there is good implanted. Or at least a desire to be good implanted in you. Right? But if you wish harm on others. You conflict with that good. And it changes who you are. Do not come this far. In the faith. And let circumstances, situations, unforgiveness, whatever, change you. That is the devil's goal in this coming year. To change you. Make you go back on what God said about you. And who you said God made you to be. Can I keep preaching? If you harboring hatred and unforgiveness and vengeance and all of that, it's going to block you from having peace and good in your life. Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil what? Speaking be what? With all what? Malice. These things have to be put away. Somebody just, you know, people read this now and they're like, well, he would rather you not have these things. I, it doesn't read that way to me. I don't, I don't see optional in there. It, don't read. it said, let all. Now, if my daddy came to me and said, boy, you better let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. I don't think I could tell him. Maybe. <laughs> I'll try. No, that's not the way it's written. It's saying that this stuff has to be done away with. You got to get, look, somebody say, you got to get past this stuff. Evil speaking and all this, oh, this is unforgiveness. You got to get past unforgiveness. You're not saved if you have unforgiveness. Yeah, 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 that mess, yeah, that's going to mess with the views and the likes. That's all right. going to heaven. Jesus ain't coming back for folks with unforgiveness. 
You carrying church hurt and you mad at the church and I don't want to have nothing to do with the church. You ain't, you ain't got a problem. You hate what God left and what God made and what Jesus sanctioned. Jesus sanctioned the church. He built the church. He said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And you hate the church? You know, we don't need no church. We, we, we can be at home. We can be saved. And, and, and John wasn't in no church. <laughs> He's on the island of Pat. You want to go to the island of Pat most and be in exile? <laughs> then shut up. Jesus left the church for us so we can benefit from it. Because there are benefits to the gathering of the saints. There are benefits to the fellowship. How many of you have benefited from being in here? Some of you didn't have no job, and you sent me a text. Hey, I need a job, Pastor. I call one of these brothers in here. They got you a job. Some of you looked around and said, hey, this little sister Susie Q is looking a little cute today, and I need a wife. How about that? And you got a wife. Amen. You better raise your hand, Gerard. Amen. You were just looking around one day. You benefited from the fellowship. Can I keep going? Why would God bless anyone that is claiming to be in him but unforgiving toward others and unwilling to accept their own error and move past it? That's a rhetorical question. I know the answer. Why would God bless anyone that's claiming to be in him but unforgiving toward others? And you know some of these folk just not saved. Matthew 6 and 15, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, what's going to happen? Neither will your father do what? Now, if you don't get your trespasses forgiven, you're going to hell. Folks that aren't forgiven go to hell. It was meant for the devil and his angels. But folks, people that don't get forgiven go to hell. So if you don't forgive men, God won't forgive you. And if you're unforgiving, where you going? Hell. To hell. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to heaven. All my sins have been forgiven. Look at somebody and say, all my sins. How much is all? All my sins have been forgiven. Amen. Jesus was born to bring peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Ain't that what the word said? If this is not what we are exhibiting or desiring, then are we truly desiring to have Christ in our lives? So if you're not exhibiting peace on earth and goodwill toward men, do you have Christ? If he came to bring that and you don't have it and don't even want it, are you in Christ? The word tells us. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves, what? Whether you be, whether you say, and improve your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reparates, or except if he's not in you? You have to, look at somebody and say, you have to know that. Look at somebody and say, examine yourself. Examine yourself with fear and trembling. And make sure your heart is clean. Listen, nobody, nobody has unforgiveness and don't know about it. <laughs> you ain't walking around and going to stand before God. When, after you die, you're going to stand before God. God, I just didn't know. You should have told me. Every time that person walked by you, you got mad. Every time you heard their name, you got upset. Every time they spoke to you, your head spin around. You coughing up stuff and throwing up in the bathroom. Yeah, unforgiveness is there. And it's a simple test. It's a simple test. If, I, if, if the name is spoken, how you feel when you hear it tells you whether or not you've forgiven that person. Yeah, that's the man. Ooh -wee. Write it on a piece of paper. Write the name down. And then put it somewhere for a few hours and forget about it. Then pick it up and look at that name. And when you see that name, the Holy Ghost or the devil, one of them, is going to tell you how you feel. Whether or not you've forgiven them or whether you wish they was burning in hell 
right then. Yeah, because if you wish evil on them, you haven't forgiven them. And here's the thing. Folks ain't, look at somebody say, folks ain't worth it. <laughs> folks aren't, you're going to let what somebody is saying or what somebody did send you to hell and interrupt your life and hold you at a standstill where you a pseudo-Christian pseudo that don't get to see Jesus? Look at somebody and say, folk ain't worth that. <laughs> no, nah, bro, you ain't worth that. Ooh, you ain't. <laughs> I'm telling you. Man, I'm going to live on to see Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So you got to forgive. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, examine yourself. Yeah. When you go into prayer before the Lord, examine yourself. And ask God to search your heart. Make sure, God. Amen? Summary! 2020 has unveiled the hatred in the hearts of men. How many of you know that? 2020 unveiled the hatred in the hearts of men. They out there tearing up stores. They tore up all of Manhattan. Boarded up buildings. Tearing up just shooting cops. Killing folks. Antifa. Just, I mean, disobey. They did all of that. And as soon as Biden got in office, it all stopped. So what was you mad at? Right. The 400 years of a... So did the slave, the ancestor speak to you and tell you to cease? <laughs> but 2020 unveiled a hatred. And we ain't just talking about the protests and this stuff. It unveiled the hatred in the heart of saved folks, or supposed pseudo saved folks. Because yeah. they was calling you a liar and a wonder just because you was going to church without a mask on. Your Holy Ghost filled fire baptized relative won't let you in the house. You are your kids. Scared they're going to get something. Holy Ghost. Yeah. Couldn't even have a phone conversation. Half of it be English and half tongues. They were so anointed before this pandemic. And you, you and an interpreter got to call them. It got to be a three-way call. Because half the conversation, hold on, baby. You know how I do. Now, how you doing? <laughs> well, I'm good. I'm still here. After all of that, I'm still here. But it's good to hear your voice, some of it. It was good to hear some of your voice. But yes, well, I just was checking on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, ba, 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 ba. Oh, well, hold on now. Hold on. I got some more. Yeah, ba, ba, I talk to coop. Ba, ba, ba. In Jesus' name. All right, all right. Well, I'll see you later. Three months later, COVID. Oh, you know, I just wanted to come by and just fellowship with you and pray with you. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. Why not? Oh, you know that COVID is going around. What happened to the ria ba ba and the ba ba ba? What made you speak in tongues? Like the autumn tongues you were speaking. What did that? Was that the, what you, you said the Holy Ghost gave you that? The utterance of that, the, the power of God. So something supernatural happened where it took your language and spoke a supernatural language through you. Ain't that supernatural? Well, is healing supernatural? <laughs> Make you want to be funny and call them. Hey, how you doing? Uh, rock, bop, bop, sock, la, bop, bop. La 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 ba 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 ba. See, that's now you're just being ugly. No, no, no. I mean, Bible got so many highlights, you can't see the pages. 
smash roses and obituaries. You know every scripture. You done rewrote the scripture on the side of the regular scripture. You got ten kinds of ink in there. You got magic marks a lot. All in the Bible. I mean, Bible just, I mean, your Bible used to be this thick. Now it's this thick. You can't even close it. You have to put your belt around it to keep it closed. Your Bible is that packed with stuff and you ain't got power over the flu. You don't want to see your own family. You don't want to be around the saints. Riots and protests and spiritual wickedness was at an all-time high in our world. This year has shown us how people can hate and attempt to destroy others all because they hate who they have become and what they have. People that hate their decisions will find someone to lash out against. They need someone to blame because their lives reek of their own bad judgments. Oh, I'm preaching. But Christ came to deliver us from our opinion of our, of our lives and give us what? Peace. But not just peace, but what? Goodwill. You can't have peace without goodwill. You got to wish good on people to have peace. If we genuinely accept him in our hearts, he will help us repair our lives and be grateful for life itself. Not things. Life itself. Not things. Grateful for life itself. Not things. And thankful to him for giving us what? Peace in place of pain. You see, if we allow our pain to manifest in the wrath and hatred toward others, then we put ourselves in position to deny the very peace and goodwill that Jesus brought to the world. This is what makes people dread holidays, hate gatherings, and fellowships, and avoid joyous occasions. They don't want to face their error and their own opinion of themselves. But those of us that are in Christ desire peace and will do whatever it takes Ooh, those of us in Christ will do whatever it takes to be at peace if we're in Christ look at somebody and say I'll do whatever it takes I'll hug your nasty neck I will shake your dirty hand I'll, I'll repent to you and ask you to forgive me even if I ain't done nothing I'll do whatever it takes to be at peace because I want the peace of God to rule in my heart. To the which also ye are called to one body. So I can be thankful. I'll do whatever. You're not taking my peace. We will ask for forgiveness for those we have wronged. We will forgive those that wronged us. Even if they do not ask us to. We will wish God good upon those that wish evil on us. We will move on from bad thoughts and intentions against those that harmed us. We will give a pass to those who do not even deserve one because we do not deserve one either. Like them old preachers who say, put them filthy hands together and give it. <laughs> <laughs> but we will look at ourselves as filthy rags that should have been thrown away but because Jesus came ain't nothing but a filthy rag messing with you and you used to be one yourself so you can't wish that they burn up because you stop being one they can stop being one and you gotta wish that on them amen Lord put them in the washing machine and Amen. Put some tide in there. Like you did me, Lord. 
But because Jesus came, we can have peace and goodwill toward all men. Y'all, this is salvation. What are we walking around talking about, Elder? Salvation? Salvation from what? What are you saved from if you're still unforgiving? What have you say? What are you saved from if you still hate someone? This is salvation. This is being a new creation. Anything outside of this is outside of Christ. To be in Christ is to be at peace with who he created and have what? Goodwill toward all his creation. Luke 2 and 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a what? A savior, which is Christ the Lord. Look at somebody and say, he is Lord. He's still Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth what? Peace and what? Good will toward men. Everyone stand to your feet. Good will, peace is what we need in our lives. Amen? Amen. I want to do something right now. I want to just pray for everyone else. Not, not, a, not even us in here. We ain't even think about ourselves right now. We're going to pray for peace and goodwill for others. Amen. Amen? Just lift your hands. Come on. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord as we join together as a fellowship of believers here in the end times, almost the end of 2020, Lord knows what, you, only you know what's going to happen in 2021. But as we approach the end of all things, which we know it's approaching, as we approach your return, which we know is drawing near, Father God, we just pray and intercede for those that are losing faith right now. Father God, those that are wavering, those that have bought into strong delusion, those that are calling the truth a lie and the lie the truth. Father, those that watch the news all day. God, they watch the news. They watch social media. They listen to any and everybody's words, and they've lost their way, Father God. Or maybe they did, weren't even on the right way. Maybe it was all emotional. Maybe it was all a facade. Whatever it is, God, we lift them up right now in prayer our relatives, our friends, our family. Father God, those that we know so they won't be overtaken by this strong delusion. Father God, so that they will not lose faith in this last and final hour. Father God, we pray right now that they would be consistent with the Holy Ghost power that they claim. And that this power will keep them from sickness, disease, from death. But Father God, even if we perish, let us perish under your word and your authority so that we will see you to be absent from the body as present with the Lord. So God, we will not fear anything including death itself. God, we don't fear a virus. We don't fear anything. We don't fear the enemy. And God, we definitely don't fear death. Father God, we don't fear. There is no fear. Perfect love cast out fear. So I pray right now that we will have that perfect love, Father God, that they would have that. Father God, all this is is them holding on to something that they need to let go of. Holding on to something that happened. Holding on to something that happened to them. Unforgiveness, God. Wrath, malice, whatever's in their heart that's causing them to lose faith in you in this last hour. We pray against it right now. We stand against it and we stand proxy and we pray for them. God, that you would see them through this hour so they won't be lost when you return. And, Father, we pray for the body of Christ. We pray for those, Father God, that are claiming that they belong to you, those that are naming the name of, of Jesus in this hour, that we will stand strong 
And God, we pray against the winter solstice tomorrow. We have power over it. We pray against it. We speak against it. Father God, that whatever spiritual wickedness they are doing, it will not come nigh us. It will not affect us. It will not harm our children. It will not harm our families. Father God, I pray a protective covering over my family and over all families, Father God, that this, this witchcraft that is spreading through this Yoruba, this Santeria, these ancient old ones, all of these spiritual, the spiritual wickedness, Father God, all the, even all the way from the Tower of Babel and Samiramis and Nimrod, all of these ancient spirits that are being unleashed on our world, Father God, that are supposedly unleashed tomorrow, the 21st. God, we speak against that. And we believe that you are all powerful and we believe that every being must bow to you. Every being is subject to your power. Every being is subject to your authority. Every knee is subject to the name of Jesus. So Father, we have no fear, but we speak against their workings right now. And God, we pray that you would cleanse us. Anything that we have, any paraphernalia, anything, any pictures hanging up, any statue, whatever we have that belongs to the New Age movement, God, illuminate it for us. Show it to us so that we can get rid of it and throw it away. Get it out of our lives. God, anybody we're communicating with that don't belong in our lives, God, that is a part of that movement. God, show them to us. Help us to cut them off. Give us the power to cut them off, whoever it is, wherever it's coming from. We speak against all witchcraft, God, all charms, Father God, all hexes, all vexes. Father God, the power of any pagan thing, we speak against it right now. Freedom in our homes, Father God, that you will restore sleep to those that are restless, Father God, because they have trinkets and witchcraft operating in their homes. We speak against that right now. Sweet sleep, sweet rest, as your word says in Proverbs, we speak that right now. Anything that is making anyone sick, any, any spell, anything that was cast over them, anything in their possession that's making them physically sick, that's weakening their immune system, whatever it is, we speak against it. Any curse that was spoken over them, we bind it right now by the power of God. We believe your power is the power that is above all power. We believe you are the same God that parted the Red Sea. You're the same God that stepped out of nothing and made something. You're the same God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We believe that. And so we pray that that power works in 2020 and 2021 and until you return. And God, let that power come back and get us. And take us away from here. Father God, pull us out of the earth so we will ascend with you and be with you forever. We believe you have and you alone have that power. So we worship and thank you, Lord, for that power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I'm going to stop. I'm not finished. Oh, but I'm going to stop. Hey. Come on, Elder.